Part 2 of the series opens up with Gladov receiving permission from the council members to remain in his position at the Pinnacle Corporation and carry out his plans. He becomes very happy after receiving the permission and decides to work on his own. The scene then shifts to the people trapped in the underground bunker waiting for the bomb to explode. Right then, Natasha hears someone knocking on the door and immediately informs the others. Soon, a bald man enters the bunker through the same door and Valera is compelled to remove the cigarette from the bomb. Seeing this, they gather around the person and ask him how he got there. When they notice that the bald young man is bleeding from his ears, they call Irina to take a look at him. Irina also arrives there in a moment and asks them to bring the man to the operation theater. While Irina asks Natasha to bring some bandages and water to cure the man, Valera and Sasha search his pockets and find a swipe card inside them. After getting the card, they immediately head to the door and try to unlock it. Surprisingly, as soon as Valera puts the card on the door, it opens, making the whole group happy. Sasha tries to stop others from going through the door as the bald man told them that someone was after him, but none of them listen to him and move forward. Inside, they find two more soldiers along with some doctors, lying dead on the floor. The group also manages to discover the CCTV camera room, from where they were being monitored. Following this, Valera decides to continue moving forward, and find a way out of the building but others are afraid, thinking that they might get shot. However, Xenia agrees to go out with Valera and grabs a gun before following him. After some time, Valera and Xenia reach outside the bunker and become very happy to finally breathe the fresh air. Xenia takes out his mobile phone to check the signal but fails to find any. At the same time, when the two are trying to figure out the way to the city, they hear a strange noise and head back to the bunker. In the next scene, the group decides to go out of the bunker to the city and search for food. Irina also finishes treating the bald man and joins the group. When Valera suggests that the ladies stay behind, while all the males go out and bring the food for them, Nadia poses it and mentions that she will also join the men. Irina also states that she will go to search for food. After this, the group comes to the conclusion that Natasha, Marina, Sasha, and Xenia will stay behind in the bunker, while the others will go out to the city and bring back food and other supplies. At the same time, Irina reminds them that before leaving, they have to bury the dead body of Nerd. Next, we see the whole group standing outside the bunker, having buried the dead body of Nerd. One by one, they return back to the bunker and prepare for their departure towards the city. Moving on, as decided, six members of the group leave the bunker and start searching for a vehicle to drive to the city. After not finding any car in proper condition, they decide to walk to the city. Soon, they walk through the forest and notice the whole city in ruins. With a detailed look around the surrounding, Midia deduces that they are still in Moscow. Meanwhile, back in the bunker, Sasha and Xenia can be seen looking around the newly found place and searching for something useful. Right then, Natasha approaches them and Xenia tries to flirt with her. Sasha feels awkward looking at this, but after Natasha leaves, Xenia tells him that he will make Natasha fall for him using simple tricks. In the following scene, Valera and the group arrive at a supermarket and hear a disturbing scream when they are just about to enter. Moments later, they find a floor full of food supplies and become very happy to collect the item they love. While everyone else is collecting food supplies, Midia goes to the other floor and searches for the drugs and other medications to get high. Later, Irina looks around the mall to find Midia and notices a strange lady walking through the corridor. But sadly, before she can catch her, the lady vanishes into thin air. On the other hand, Valera, who is looking for mobile phones and some security cameras, also nearly gets attacked by a group of strange women and manages to run away in time. Following this, when the group is about to exit the supermarket after collecting the items they wanted, Irina notices the same lady that she noticed before. The lady slowly approaches the group and makes the same strange, disturbing sound that we have been hearing throughout the whole series. The sound is capable of making someone deaf or paralyzed. Luckily everyone has blocked their ears and when the lady is about to attack them, the same guy who is searching for his sister, Max, arrives there and shoots the girl. He then joins the group and asks them to leave the building as soon as possible. Valera also makes it out in time and they manage to leave the building in Max's car before the killer girls attack them. The scene then shifts to the bunker where the group has just arrived. They begin discussing the insane women they meet in the supermarket. Valera also states that he saw one of them killing a guy, biting into his throat. Max also adds to this and informs everyone that the women are like a mutant and they just make an irritating sound and follow the prey as if they have a sense of connection. Elsewhere, Gladov is at a research facility where his group has managed to capture one of the mutants and is about to perform different tests on her. Gladov orders the head scientist to accelerate the tests and inform him about the results. He also mentions that the girls are pretty but dangerous. At the same time, we see Randomsky approaching a dead mutant on the streets and taking her blood sample in a tube. Back in the bunker, Marina feels ill and vomits blood. Natasha tries to calm her down and asks her to take a rest. Later, Irina joins the group and informs them that they will need to do blood transfusion to save the bald soldier. 
who barged into the bunker a day earlier. Irina suggests they go to the nearest blood center and bring the blood for him. At first, everyone refuses to go out and bring the pack of blood, getting afraid to encounter the killer ladies. But later, Midia wakes up and agrees to go out. Valera and Max also join him and Irina and head out to the nearest blood center. In the next scene, Gladov receives a call from Randomsky, asking him where his daughter is. Gladov just tells Randomsky that he betrayed them and because of this, his daughter has been punished. He suggests Randomsky come back to him. But when Randomsky refuses he just asks him to look for his daughter among the mutants. Soon, he cuts the call short and yells at his men to find Randomsky and bring him alive. Next, while Sasha is trying to extract some data from the motherboard he found at the bunker, Pasha is keeping an eye on Marina through the CCTV cameras, and it seems like he has started to get attracted to her. Suddenly, Marina vanishes from the room, and seeing this, Pasha starts searching for her everywhere. He fails to find her inside the bunker and leaves the bunker to search for Marina outside. Meanwhile, Irina and the group enter the blood center and begin looking for the blood reservatory. Nydia finds the place where the blood is being stored and brings two of the packets to Irina. Suddenly, some of the mutants enter the blood center and spot them. Fortunately, they manage to leave the blood center before the mutant group can attack them. When the group gets back to the bunker, Jane informs them that Marina is missing and Pasha has also gone out to find her. Hearing this, Irina suggests they go out and search for them, but Max tells her that it has already become dark and they should search for them the next day. Right then, Natasha arrives there and informs them that the bald soldier was actually sent there to kill them by Pinnacle Corporation. As soon as Midia hears this, he tells others that they should kill the soldier rather than try to save his life. Everyone else opposes his suggestion, making Midia enraged. He then steals Max's gun and heads toward Operation Theater to kill the soldier. Inside, Midia does not find the soldier on the bed, and when he is searching for him around, the soldier suddenly arrives in front of him prompting him to shoot him in the stomach. Everyone else is shocked to see this, and after a pause, Valera asks Midia to leave the bunker. Midia tries to make others understand that he killed the soldier for them, but none of them listen to him and remain silent. On the other hand, Pasha finds Marina inside a building, which was mentioned by the guy on the radio. They find the radio guy dead inside a room and Pasha deduces that they should return to the bunker. However, Marina tells him that she is pregnant and does not want to go back to the bunker. Next, Midia is ready to leave the bunker and refuses to take any of the items offered by the group. Before leaving, he meets Max and tells him that Arena is very difficult to handle. Sometime later, Midia arrives at a bar and finds some powder to get high. The next day, after the group went out to search for food, Irina finds Max sneaking out of the place and confronts him. He tells her that he will not stop till he finds his sister and proceeds to leave. Surprisingly, Irina also joins him and drives away without informing the rest of the group. When the group finds out about Irina and Max's escape, they belittle them and begin partying, believing that they will leave the bunker the following day. At the same time, Nadia walks out of the bunker and here, it seems like someone is keeping an eye on her. Meanwhile, Irina and Max arrive at Max's sister's apartment and find her boyfriend lying dead on the floor. Beside him, Max discovers an iPad and begins playing the video that his sister, Lana's boyfriend, recorded before dying. Through the video, he gets to know that his sister has been infected by the virus despite her boyfriend trying his best to save her. In the video, he also finds out that Lana eventually turned into a mutant and killed her own boyfriend. After seeing this, Max gets heartbroken and starts crying, sitting on a couch. Irina tries her best to calm him down and starts searching for some medication that could be useful for them in the future. Suddenly, Lana, who is now a mutant, approaches Irina and is about to attack her. Seeing this, Max pulls out his gun with a heavy heart and shoots at his own sister, killing her on the spot. He becomes really sad after doing this and yells out his frustration. Back in the bunker, a group of hunters entered and captured Valera and the group. They are happy to find food supplies and decide to live there. However, the hunters change their minds when Sasha lies to them, telling them that the mutants frequently come to their place and try to break in. Hearing this, the hunters decide to leave, tying up the group members. Surprisingly, Nadia calls the leader of the hunter group and asks him if she can join their group. Happily, the leader accepts her proposal and takes her with him. In return, Valera requests him to leave them a map of the place, and the leader agrees to it too. Sadly, the hunters leave by locking Valera and the group from outside. Meanwhile, while Irina and Max are driving their car through the city, the fuel runs out and they are compelled to stop in the middle of the road. Here, Irina suggests they walk out the vehicle and search for another one and Max agrees to her. He and Irina carefully step out of their car and run towards the buildings in search of another car. Next, Jane is standing in front of the mirror and looking at her hand where she has a wound that she got from a mutant bite while they were searching for food some time before. She pulls her 
her sleeves and hides the wound before walking out of the room. In the following scene, Valor tries to blow the door with a bomb, but fails. Right then, Sasha tries to console him, telling him that Arena and Max will return. Sadly, Valor does not believe this, and replies that no one will return after they make their way out of the bunker. On the other hand, walking around the streets, Max and Arena hear some people talking, and they quietly follow the sound. Soon, they find three soldiers patrolling the place. Max calls them out but to their bad luck, the soldiers start openly firing at them despite them mentioning that they are not infected. Luckily, the two manage to get out of the place alive. At the same time, Pasha and Marina are also walking together and talking about their future. Soon, they spot a horse and Pasha tries to catch it. When the horse starts running away, he asks Marina to wait for him and pursues the horse. Marina then wanders around the area and spots a dead mutant on the road. To her bad luck, another mutant is waiting behind her. When the mutant is about to attack Marina, someone shoots the mutant and knocks Marina unconscious, hitting her with a needle. Afterward, Irina and Max find a car and are ready to drive away from the place. Max suggests they leave the city as soon as possible while Irina mentions that they need to return to the bunker and inform the group about the violent military. At first, Max refuses to comply with her, but later, he agrees to go back to the bunker. Moving on, Marina wakes up inside a closed room and asks for help. Soon, a soldier enters the room and checks on her. After he is convinced that she is not infected, he calls Gladov and his employee inside the room. Wasting no time, Gladov enters the room and tries to talk to Marina. However, Marina does not speak a word and keeps looking at Gladov's employee. Enraged, Gladov mentions that she will be used as another test subject and walks away from there. In the following scene, Irina and Max can be seen inside the bunker, informing the group about what they faced while in the streets. Irina is shocked to know that Nadia went out with the group of hunters. After some time, Max looks at the map provided to the group by the leader of the hunters, and makes a plan to escape the city. Back at the enclosed chamber, Gladov's employee comes to visit Marina, and it turns out that he is her lover. When Marina tells him that she was locked in the bunker, and is also pregnant, he suggests she not tell anyone about the bunker. Unbeknownst to them, Gladov is looking at them through the CCTV camera and is also hearing their conversation. Before leaving, he tells Marina that he works for Pinnacle Corporation and assures her that he will save her. Later, Sasha takes Irina to the computer room and shows her the information that he was able to gather. He tells her that he got some data about the Project Clayton and the test subjects. Surprisingly, the 10 test subjects are the members of their group except for Irina. Seeing this, Irina deduces that she was not supposed to be with them. Following this, they also spot the name of Randonsky and he turns out to be the teacher who taught Irina during her medical study. She then informs Max and Sasha that Randomsky is a good man, and he cannot think about locking someone in the bunker to perform an experiment. After this, when Sasha notices that their bunker door is open, he and the group wait for someone to approach. As soon as the door gets opened, Valera tries to attack a young boy who walks in. The young boy is then tied to a chair and is interrogated about his purpose of visiting them. The boy replies that he is sent there by Randomsky to rescue them. He also informs them about how Randomsky mistakenly lost the vial and created the whole situation and that the vaccine for the virus is ready. Hearing this, Valera gets enraged and knocks the guy out. Meanwhile, Gladov is ready to perform the tests on the subject with different frequencies of the ultrasound. When one of the researchers shows him that the ultrasound can remove the urge of killing in the mutants, Gladov sends Marina inside the same room as the mutant and proceeds to test the effects of ultrasound on his own. When the ultrasound is off, the mutant acts violent and chases after Marina, but when the ultrasound is introduced, the mutant becomes calm. With the increasing decibel of ultrasound, the mutant starts to suffer and falls to the ground. Vladov seems really happy with the experiment, as he believes that he has found the perfect weapon to control the mutants. The scene then shifts to the bunker, where Jane is inside the bathroom and is about to cut her veins. Valera and others try to stop her from doing so, but she seems in no mood to listen to them. She shows them the wound that she got from the mutant bite, and asks them to stay away from her. However, Valera manages to walk closer to her, and drop the sharp blades from her hands. He then hugs her tight and assures her that he will do everything in his capacity to save her. On the other hand, Irina visits the young boy and brings him back to consciousness. She then asks him about the Professor Randomsky and his progress in making vaccines. The guy tells her that she looks similar to him, and also mentions that the vaccine is almost completed. Hearing this, Irina suggests he remain quiet and asks him the address of Randomsky's laboratory. After getting this information from him, she lets him go away. Later, when Valera finds out about it, he gets really angry at Irina and grabs her by the collar. He only leaves her after she mentions that she has the address of Randomsky's laboratory 
and they need to take Jane there to save her life. In the last scene, the whole group decides to leave the bunker and walks towards the laboratory. Surprisingly, Xenia and Natasha suggest separating into groups and search for help. Everyone else likes her idea and Max also provides them with his car. The group then walks out of the bunker and while Natasha and Xenia drive away in the car, others walk towards a hidden route to make their way to Randomsky's laboratory. The episode ends with Gladov asking his employee to set up an ultrasound emission spot in the city and gather all of the mutants at a single place. It seems like he is planning something evil by gathering the big army of mutants. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.